Madame Lacarde, uh, the agreement in Glasgow is fresh, and it, if anything, underlines the urgency to translate climate change risk into financial risks, including uh, credit ratings. Now, already in October 2018, your predecessor, and he was not very green, Mario Draghi, pointed out that the Euro system was carrying out additional works to further deepen its understanding of rating, rating method methodologies and rating processes. So my questions to you are the following. Do you agree that credit rating agencies have a pivotal role to play in ensuring uh, that climate risks are well integrated in the assessment of companies' financial health? Second, considering the work that has already been done in the past three years and that knowledge that has been gathered, would the ECB be able to speed up the process of assessing how credit rating agencies integrate climate change risks? And thirdly, do you see a role for the EU legislators here to ensure that climate risks are indeed better integrated in credit ratings? Um, and yeah, I keep it for the time at that. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Tong. Uh, as always, very pertinent questions, uh, if I may. Um, I think that there is another category which will have a critically important role to play going forward in order to actually uh, better inform, properly disclose, and adequately measure the risk related to climate change, and those are the auditing firms. Uh, credit rating agencies will, will have uh, to take them into account, but those that will actually play a critical role in uh, elevating uh, the uh, requirements and auditing and measuring them will be the auditors. And the work that is being conducted at the moment by the um, various um, body setters in relation to audit principles are vitally important uh, if we want to do a good job. Um, second, I would say that um, the European Parliament plays a fundamental role in progress that is being made. The work that you did a year ago in relation to taxonomy has been extremely important, is regarded around the world as pioneer uh, work, and of obviously there are areas where we are not there yet, where certain sectors have not been rated exactly as was anticipated or has not, have not yet found their uh, space in the list. But pioneer work has been done by your parliament. And the same is true for the, uh, for the green bond um, proposed regulations on which uh, the ECB has just recently issued <coughs> excuse me, a legal opinion. Uh, again, you are ahead of the game and ahead of the curve in that respect. And while China has published its own green bond regulatory framework, I think the European Parliament is the next one uh, to have done so in a very comprehensive way and will continue to play that role. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Ernesto Tassoun for the Greens. Yes, thank you, uh, President Lagarde. I have the uh, chance to make you a second question. Uh, we haven't spoken much about the, uh, the accountability and the relations between the ECB and the European Parliament. Um, uh, here I would like a bit to know uh, how do you see the next steps? Huh? In the, your introductory statement you have spoken about um, uh, to keep certain flexibility, that uh, what matters is how we make things. Uh, but I would like to concretely ask you whether you would agree on having an interinstitutional agreement or not, or how do you see the next steps in our relations between both institutions? Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Otasun, for, uh, for your second question in that respect. Um, first of all, I would um, observe that our uh, current accountability relationship is highly appreciated and uh, that the ECB is committed to uh, deliver on the accountability uh, relationship that we have developed that goes beyond uh, some of the traditional um, tools that were used in the past. And we're, of course, uh, interested in not only delivering on that and continuing that dialogue that we have and that exchange of views and those visits and those, you know, topical consultations that we have had over the course of the last two years, certainly. But I think we should also reflect as to how further we can improve the relationship how more can be done, and all of that within the parameters of the treaty and in total respect of the independence of the ECB. Those are cornerstones of the relationship uh, that, uh, that we should have in the future. The treaty is very clear on what we can uh, do, and I think the independence of the central bank is something that was also 
uh, embedded in the uh, in the setting up of of this of this institution. You know, I'm not I'm not that keen on a particular label, and I think that we should be mindful of not undermining the treaty provisions uh, that actually provide for the relationship between the ECB and the European Parliament. I'm more interested in what we can effectively operationalize between us than in the actual title of any um, uh, framework that we organized amongst, amongst ourselves. But you know, we will be working on that and we will be uh, very open to this, uh, this dialogue.